So, you were talking about surgeries before I rudely cut you off. Yeah, we're good. What surgeries have you had? I had uh, two on my shoulder. Let's pull these down a little. Okay. <laughs> Where do I gotta go? You're fine. You're All good. Right. Do you want me to use the face rest too low? That's fine. I don't know. Okay. I'll bring it up a little bit, I guess, if we can. That'd be cool. We started this already? Yeah. Oh, wow. Kind of. I haven't introduced you yet, so. <coughs> More? Better? That's yeah. good. Yeah? All right. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Do it. Okay, I'm me. You're me. Yeah. I'm Josh O'Brien. Uh, retired Navy CV stand up comic. Morning radio guy. I'm like the Where's Waldo of rock and roll radio in Los Angeles. <laughs> so you wear a red and white striped shirt? Of course, with the KLS logo. And a yeah. toque. So, the yeah, baby. a toque. Oh, We're going oh, Canadian over here? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so we a have toque. a Canadian. A? Who's Canadian? Me. Emily. Fucking Canucks, man. <laughs> She's from Nova Scotia. Uh, don't you know Canuckleheads? Canuckleheads. P.S. I know this isn't part of the podcast, but it is. We watched um, uh, Super Troopers 2 no. last night. You did? And every time um, that dude started talking, I thought of you, and it made me giggle. <laughs> and then he started talking about the Halifax the explosion. explosion. And I was all... <laughs> I know about that. It's the Halifax. Only... Halifax. Halifax. Yeah. I love that movie Goon. You guys see that? This is a hockey movie, right? Yeah, it's With Stifler? Yeah, Stifler's a, yeah. I haven't seen it, but I know. Oh, uh, there's a part where he goes, becomes a Halifax hitman, and he's chasing after him. Halifax! Halifax! <laughs> so every time I hear Halifax, I think of that. That's funny. I think uh, anytime somebody says that they're going to go to Big Bear, like yeah. to go skiing or something, I think of The Great Outdoors with um, John Candy. When he runs into the house and he's all, Big Bear! Big Bear! Big Bear! <laughs> Nobody else gets that reference but me. That's a good movie. <laughs> no, it's still good. With the I think we get it. It's just not as funny. Thanks, Josh. Just kidding, man. Man, you realize you are in the position. You're in a very vulnerable position. <laughs> right now, but, and I'm a very strong female with very sharp elbows. So all my jokes are funny. <laughs> I'm going to POW mode. Uh, SW1 O'Brien, retired. <laughs> Service number 12345678. I'm American fighting man. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Some shit, I don't remember how it goes. I'm retired. How long have you been retired? Oh, about three years. Okay, damn, that's not that long ago. Nah, man, it feels like yesterday. I did a roast retirement since everybody here is a affiliated with the comedy store in one way or another, but I did a roast retirement ceremony there instead of a retirement ceremony. Uh-huh. It was cool. It was supposed to be at 8 o'clock. got bumped by Louis C.K., so I ended up being at 10. Oh, did he jerk off in front of you? Did you apologize? No, no, no. He never asked, so I guess he never did. Mm -hmm. you know, at least the dude went for consent, but, you know, no. Yeah, just, but that's just like when somebody comes up to me and they're like, do you want guacamole on your food? And I'm like, I oh, can't yeah, find I don't know, just leave me alone. <laughs> just, whatever, put it on there. Sour cream, okay. Fine, show it to me, I don't know. Stop talking to me, just do it so I can leave. And later. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I eat all those avocados? <laughs> don't worry, I won't jerk off on the podcast. No, I do it after though? I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> that's later. So you are we'll, we'll put that on Patreon. Yeah. It'll be. It'll be on Patreon. Yeah. Dude, it's me and Patreon. Like I help a lot of. I do a lot of fucking podcasts, man. I edit a lot of these things. Mm-hmm. So I like the store. Helped the store. Helped out Don Bears for a while. Do uh, fucking Sam Tripoli's. A couple yeah. others. The Comedy Store podcast is my favorite. Podcast. Is it? Is it pretty cool? Oh, it's liking it? so much fun. I've been listening. John listens to it more than I do. Okay, cool. Because he has that hour drive to Port Wayne every yeah. day. Yeah. See, I didn't realize you like you live down here. I thought you guys were up there. We live in Santa Clarita. Oh, okay. We live this right is, by Magic Mountain. This yeah. is the Sandra's place. Oh, okay. Oh, hey. P.S. You have a rhinestone on the bottom of your foot. So. <laughs> so can I take a picture of that? <laughs> can on the I bottom please? of my foot? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's just the casualty that happens. With a you rhinestone be... cowboy. <laughs> Did you see it? It was sure. a sequin. 
Did it fall? Did it fall off? It must have fallen. Oh, no. No. <laughs> okay, put it back on. We gotta take a picture. If that's okay. Sure, go for it. Man. <laughs> the bottom of your feet. Oh, it's already yeah. my butt crack ain't it's showing. No, 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 you're good. Okay, just and I need but I need your butt crack. Well, anyway. go for it. That's fine. <laughs> I just didn't want to photograph. Ph photograph. Photograph. <laughs> Damn, I'm that good. Look at you. You're already relaxed. No, it's nervous. You nervous? No, it's joking. All right. He's a guy in a room with three girls. Of course he's nervous. You're yeah. right, and a rhinestone on his foot. Yeah, oh, yeah. Where are we going to do with him? <laughs> a very vulnerable position. You are. <laughs> Just wait. Man <laughs> all alone in West Hollywood. What will you do? A rhinestone whip. <laughs> you know, I have one. Yes, I've held it many times. Holy fucking Christ, what did I get myself into? <laughs> no, but really, the Comedy Story podcast is... Hilarious. Yeah. It's just listening to the stores has, you know, the store is like my favorite place ever. And it always ends up getting brought up in my podcast, too. Well, yeah, it's like you always have, you know, store people, which is cool. Like, you know, stores saved my life, man, fucking several times. Yeah. I got back from like Iraq 2000, like six, seven ish. And then uh, uh, after that deployment, we had. That's why I wanted to be a comic, too. We had Robin Williams, Louis Black, Kid Rock, and that year's Miss America were the um, USO tour, you know? Uh-huh. <clears throat> and it was crazy because, like, that was... When you're when you're deployed and you're in the field, you got, like, a million things going through your head, you know? You're like, who's... Uh, what, is the gun truck's good to go? The comms up? Who's going through a divorce? Whose kids learn how to walk? Whose mind's not on a mission, you know? So you're always thinking about that kind of shit. Right. And for the first time on that deployment, uh, the first time my mind went blank and I could actually enjoy something, you know, when it was, that was when Robin Williams was killing it on stage. Right. Was it pre, or was it during cocaine or after cocaine? Oh, he was sober for, at the time. This is 2000, uh, this is 2007, actually. Because <coughs> Ricky Ingram talks about how. Oh, yeah. I'm, trust me, I'm in the other room on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> right? When he, hey, he's the one that destroyed. Hey, Robin, him. remember that one time you, me, and Mitz were up in the hill? <laughs> You know, when he does drunk Argus, dude, uh -huh. fucking rips the shit. Hey, hey, Robin, remember that one time? It's like, I don't know, you and Mitz, you mm. guys are doing bumps in the back. Mm. And, and then bumps. Chick Green comes walking in. <laughs> Mike Becker was back there somewhere. I don't remember. I can't buy cocaine because you still owe money. Uh, listen, <laughs> I, I don't like cocaine. I just love how it smells. I love how it smells. Mm -mm -mm. I saw one of Argus's jokes on a meme the other day. No. And I was like, oh, what? wait, that's stolen. It was the, um, you know you're drunk when you swerve to hit, swerve so you don't hit a tree and you realize it's your air, air freshener. freshener. And I was like, that's an Argus's joke. See, I wrote that one back in 1984. <laughs> I was on my fourth DUI. I was coming down the hill. And I thought, wouldn't that be funny? Oh, fuck, dude. Argus is such a good dude. So did you start comedy, like, immediately when you got back? No, no. Actually, like, I got back, and then, like, um, my wife and I are on the rocks. Uh, I extended to be an instructor. Uh-huh. So, well, you're familiar with Port Wainimi. Mm hmm For those dear listeners that are not. It's where my, my base where I was uh, fucking stationed, and I was in a battalion of like 800 people, and they deployed, and then I stayed back as an instructor, so all my friends are gone, the people I worked with were married, so they got like family shit going on, um, my shoulder's fucked up, about ready to have a surgery, pretty depressed, living with some survivor's guilt, I lost a good buddy of mine in Iraq, and uh, so I'm just kind of like, Kind of like, dude, I need to fucking distract myself. So I went and I watched a taping of Lewis Black's Root of All Evil. And at the end of it, mm. he's all like, hey, uh, anybody want to talk, say anything, or you want to talk or about some shit or whatever? I don't know. Just, this feels really good, so I forgot what I was saying. That's perfect. So, yeah. <laughs> Start you know, telling so. me your secrets soon, okay? Oh, yeah, cool. Um, three, one, one, one. <laughs> <laughs> and diamonds are in the rough. Okay. A second. <laughs> Who wants to come on stage? Dude, who wants to just come? That felt great. <laughs> so, uh, he, at the at the end of the whole thing, he's like, "Hey, um, you know, I, I, nice. Thanks for coming out. Uh, anybody want to say anything or whatever?" And I just raised my hand. I was like, "He's like, hey, what, what's going on?" I was like, "Hey, man, I'm uh, Pet Officer O'Brien with New Mobile Construction Tie 40. Just want to say thanks for coming out to uh, Kuwait and hanging out. 
with the troops at Christmas, and then he went on this whole thing about how Robin asked him to go, and he he thought it was really cool, and I, we're all, like I was really appreciative, still this day I'm appreciative of that. And then uh, I was like, oh, cool, that kept my mind off, you know, basically blowing my brains out, you know, because, like, I did have a gun in my mouth the day before that. So, anyways, uh, yeah, so that was cool. And then I went and I watched uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live a couple days later because I wanted to go watch a taping of something, and I was wearing a, a Red Wings jersey. Meet Mr. Uh, Don Barris. Mm-hmm. And he's like, cool, and I, I remembered him from watching Windy City Heat, which is still, like, one of my favorite fucking movies. It's fucking hilarious, it you know? It is hilarious. And I, I've done so many setups, like, of Red Bat, Blue Bat type shit. If you don't know, watch this fucking movie. But <laughs> I've done silly shit like that because I, I always thought that was funny. It reminded me a lot of, like, Three Stooges type stuff. And it, it was just really cool. So he's like, hey, come hang at the store. So I did. You know, he told everybody to go do that. And I was shooting shit with him about I was a big Pistons fan. I'm a big Red Wings fan. Talking about Detroit sports for a little bit. So I go to the store, and I'm hanging out. And I'm um, out back, and it was before, like, the rush. Like, now you go to the store, it's fucking uh, assholes to elbows. Everybody's in that motherfucker now, you know? Mm -hmm. But back then, barely anybody, you know, went. So, uh, Steve Trevino, Triple E, fucking Steve Simone. Mm -hmm. I feel like I need a bag for all the names I'm dropping, but there's a lot but of... Just, then we, we'll clean them up later. <laughs> there's all these, uh, all these comics that I was just shooting the shit with that I was just blown away to be there, and then... They're asking me about Iraq, and I'm telling, you know, stories, and they're like, dude, you should be going up there and, and telling that on stage. And um, I was scared, dude. Then, uh, I think it was Benji Aflalo pulled me in from the main room to the uh, OR. He's like, dude, fucking hang out here. And then next time they had a potluck, I just mm -hmm. asked if I could slide up and do a spot. And then, you know, but there was like, then... It's not like now. Like, now the place is fucking full. It's hard as fuck to get a spot, you know? Yeah, I, back, I do know. Back then, it was just kind of like, fuck it, slide them in, you know? Right. So there's pictures of me on stage, like, almost ten years ago, which that shit would never happen fly now, you know, if you just walked in and you're, like, well, hanging out and being cool. People try. Yeah. It's hilarious to watch. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> when people call, what if I just give you money? And yeah. I'm like, oh, honey, <laughs> No. Or the pretty girls. I'm pretty. I should be on stage. Yeah, not this one. There should be a pole mm. in the middle of it. Yeah, sorry, body, body works just down the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, you didn't stop? Like, after you started, you didn't stop? Well, I transferred to Virginia, and then I, I didn't do comedy for, like, two or three years. And then while I was in Virginia, I still kept in contact, though, with a lot of the comics from the store. You know, mm -hmm. and then um, I was getting used to my job. I was an ops chief, so I was in charge of all the construction in Virginia Beach for the Seabees on most of the military bases. So I was like, my thing, and then I uh, just wanted to go up. Fucking uh, Bobby Lee came through at the fucking Funny Bone. Mm -hmm. A week later, it's um, Polly Shore with uh, fucking Steve Simone. Steve Simone's like, hey, brother, you're funny, dude. You really should go up, man. It's midnight. <laughs> so it's kind of like Steve Simone was one who's kind of solid solidified me starting going back up. Cause I really wanted to. I just kind of think, you know, like your comics or your round comics enough to know that it's kind of that positive push sometimes. Uh huh. And that negative push to say you can't do it at the same time. You know. Uh huh. So if you got both those going on, it really is good motivation. So. Steve Simone was one of my pushes, and he has no idea. Yeah, but he too. was on stage one night, and there was some drunk twat. Oh, my goodness. And she was so drunk, and he kept trying to talk, and she just kept interrupting him. And he Ooh. lost his cool. And Steve Simone oh, you does not that. lose his cool. No, but and because at one point he was talking, and she goes, excuse me. <laughs> and all of us in the audience were like, what the fuck is happening? And she's like, he's like, I'm on stage. And she goes, yeah, but I just wanted to give you a joke. And all of, like, you could hear the collective gasp, like, oh, holy shit, she's dumb. <laughs> and the pitter-patter of all the feet of the comedians yeah. like, running in to see what's going to happen. All the door guys were like, oh, shit, <laughs> don't light him, don't light him. Get her. <laughs> and um, Destroy he, her. He did. He went off on her and started yelling and just calling her a bunch of names and then at the very end he left 
And then he came back, and I don't remember who was on stage after him, but he came back and he took the microphone and he's like, I feel really bad about being mean to you. I'm not a mean person. And he's like, comedy is hard. And I know you guys all saw me bomb right now because I let her get in my head. And I know all of you guys think that you could do comedy. And John looked over at me and he's like, I don't think I could do comedy. And I go, <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> I just spit. That was amazing. Oh, and that is the broken part of yeah. every comedian room. It's like when you see a room and they're not giving the comic anything and they're uh -huh. just dying slowly on stage. And there's still a part of you that's like, I want to. I, will, I can break them. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if we do this, this will work. Yeah, I can go. I can do it. And that's when John looked at me. Give and he's me three like, minutes. <laughs> he goes, you really want to do comedy, uh -huh. don't you? And I'm like, yep. And that's when he found the ha-ha, and I paid $5 for five minutes and all that good stuff. But, yeah, Steve, Simone, he has no idea because every time I try and talk to him, I think I scare him, and he runs away. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get him on the table, and he, like, panicked. Oh. I'm like, hey, do you want to do my podcast? And he's like, I don't like, I don't, I just, I feel bad. And then he started talking about being in a hotel room and how he cleans the hotel room because he doesn't want the maid. To... And I was like, I, I'll make the bed. <laughs> it's like, we didn't want this to be a thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just really like you. And I kind of want to tell you my story about how you helped me start comic. But okay, sure. Um, do you want me to give you a hotel room? Like, I don't know what's <laughs> happening right now. We can do it in a weird hotel. You want to do that? We've done that before. And I don't know if you know this, but I just did Benji. Oh, no shit. No shit. Benji. Like, how long ago? Just like today? Like 30 minutes ago. Well, dude, I'm telling you, man. A lot of people don't realize. That guy, I swear to fucking Christ, man. If it wasn't for him, uh, I wouldn't be doing this. You know? And a lot of it. It's really weird how the dominoes stacked for you to go up. You know what I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. For you to get up on stage. Like, Barris was being cool. You know, hey, man, I, I saw him there. And it's just really inviting to go to the comedy store. Benji pulls me in from the from the original room, or from the main room into the original room. And being in the original room, going out and hanging out and shooting the shit with people that are basically, like, on deck for the baseball. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it was just how a lot of that shit just worked together. And then Tommy, I mean, he's gone, but a lot of people don't like him, but I, ain't gotta, I really don't have anything bad to say about the guy because mm -hmm. I never really had to deal with him. But at right. the same time, he's like, I was asking him questions about being able to go up. And he's like, look, you're a comic. You just don't know it yet. Mm -hmm. The building knows you are. You know you are, or no, no, he's like, the building knows you are, inside you are, you don't know you are. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy rattling? <laughs> yeah. Thank but, you, Yoda. Yeah, this is like, exactly, you know, so. That would be a fun one. Get Tommy on the table. Oh, my God. Wow. Well. <laughs> I don't know, I don't even know how to get a hold of him. I know he was Earl. doing, yes, he was girl. doing Next Stage for a while. He's doing some Taco Tuesday thing now. Oh, is he? Yeah. Amazing. So, you said you had two sh shoulder surgeries. Say that three times fast. Mm, yeah, two on the same one, though. Yeah. What happened? Did you tear it? Did you... Uh, so, I was separating concrete forms in uh, Okinawa, and instead of separating the forms, I separated my shoulder. This was in, like, my first year in the military and shit. And then, um, so I was like, Fuck, I didn't want to report it because I wanted to go to underwater construction teams. Like, it's basically like being a SEAL without guns. You know what I mean? It's like, right. there's all the training and all that other shit. I know, like, I'm kind of round shaped now, but I used to be pretty athletic. Um, it's probably a little day job. But, anyway, it's like fucking. Uh, that feels good. But, um, yeah, I, I popped it out. And then um, a few years later, I popped it out again when I was in Iraq. But, um, no, I was, I was all set up for freaking going to the school to be a diver and stuff, and that's when I got, uh, I got the consult in for my surgery, and then I did the surgery, and I was healed up, and then I was, I had the opportunity to still go for the same diver school, but I was set up to go to Hon uh, Puerto Rico, and I was, like, going to be in charge of some construction there, and I was like, dude, this is Puerto Rico, I don't want to, you know, re jeopardize that, and I just... Ended up loving what I was already doing. I just never submitted papers to go as a diver. Which, you know, it is what it is. Is that the only surgery you've had? Uh, I had the two there on the, the, the shoulder. I was supposed to have my hips replaced. 
but I don't want to do that. No? Not, no, I'm not in a hurry to have surgery. You know what? I had a lady, she was, she's 72 now, she was 70 when she had her hip replaced. She's walking the next day, she's spry as fuck. Yeah. And, um, she's a little odd, but, um, love her. <laughs> <laughs> and we, She's yeah. doing the fucking marathon, she's going to the Boston Marathon next year. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, no, she's, she's, she got into politics, because that's what every seven-year-old person should do. All right. And strike two on why she got hip surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and she just start. She's a ranter. She's adorable. And like she doesn't remember what she does afterwards. It's okay. Mm -hmm. But no, the hip surgery now compared to what it was five years ago is just so drastically changed. Yeah. Well, my, it depends on what part though. You know what I mean? Like what yeah. part of the, your hip? My dad had both of his hip replaced. He had to eat both sides done. Yeah. Same thing, my dad was Air Force, and he had his done through the VA and all that good stuff. Yeah, the VA, second chance to die for your country. It's <laughs> awesome. But he liked, I mean, he, they sent him up to, I want to say like San Jose or somewhere up there. Oh, cool. And that's where he had his hip surgery. But he swears by it. Yeah, I'm just not in a hurry to do that. Any crazy broken bones? No. No crazy hospital visits? Uh, not on my own. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Alright, so, I don't know how depressing you want to make this shit sound, man, but, mm -hmm. alright, so I was a, I was a recruiter for fucking three years in Northwest Ohio, and I recruited out of the school I went to, it was a vocational school, I had this dude, he was a kick-ass electrician, he went to state, and I'm like, God, I want this dude in the fucking, I definitely want this dude in the, in the, in the battalions I'm going to, because he's already interested in, in the military. So I recruited him. I got him, you know, fast forward to, uh, <coughs> he, I got him the job he wanted, electrician, I made a lot of calls to the processors to make sure that shit was good to go. And then after that, I was like, I could just do it in my battalion. So I did, and I called the detailer, that's the guy who kind of picks where you go, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I'm in Guam for like three weeks. My, my, the dude I'm talking about, Lucas, he's in uh, Iraq. And uh, he's like, oh, dude, you know, this is MySpace days before Facebook, but, man, I'm fucking kicking ass, I'm digging it here, and, you know, he's he's in Fallujah, and he's doing convoy shit, and, uh, so, it's like, mind you, this is my recruit, and I'm like, you fucking asshole, I told, I told your mom, because I sat down with his mom, like, across the table, I was like, you know, oh, no, he'll be in a safe place, <laughs> but he puts himself, you know, you have to volunteer for this gig. Right. So he volunteered for, like, the, I mean, you're basically a rolling target. You're on a main supply route. It's a big fucking highway. It's basically like the 405. All the time, military vehicles going from point A to point B, and they're always, there's always people that are out there trying to ambush you. Non-stop IEDs and shit. So, I'm, I'm in Guam, enjoying my time, and uh, my operations chief's like, hey, Obi, how do you feel about going to Iraq? And I said, do you give a fuck about how I feel? He says, no, I'll see you in two weeks. So, <laughs> Then I'm in Iraq, and then, um, so this dude I put in the Navy, I have coffee with them on, like, every, like, other day almost, and just shoot the shit with them, and then, uh, we're fixing a road, next thing, or we're fixing roads as part of my job, and I get a report that one of our trucks were hit, and it was Gallagher, was one of them, the dude I was talking about, Lucas Gallagher, fuck it, hit an IED, and then, um, so... I guess he got launched pretty far from the vehicle. And the corpsman, which is a military doc, basically named doc, looks at him and like, Did you, are, you, are you okay? And like he's going to be like, yeah, perfectly fine, dude. No, but um, he's, he's out. So they're like trying to fucking wake, wake him up. And then when he sits up, he's just like, how's my face? You know, like that. <laughs> so first thing he says, and I love that story because, like, the first thing he's thinking about is pussy, dude. You right. know what I mean? Like, he gets destroyed, but, you know, he loses a couple toes in the back of his cap, and he's just trying to get ass. I fucking love that, dude. I thought it was <laughs> hilarious. And so then I'm in the hospital hanging out with this cat. And then, uh, you know, the general that's in charge of that whole area is like, you're his recruiter? No shit. Get in for a picture. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I was like, what kind of recruiting poster is this going to be? You know? So, but, yeah. That was one of my visits for the hospital. Other than that, you know, good dude. He's fucking making bank. 
doing it now. Is he still getting pussy? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> well, yeah, no, he is, because he's got kids now, like two of them, so. No, oh, no, he's you not getting to, any. You have to, <laughs> yeah, not he, from the wife. He had, so. that would be. He did it, you know? Yeah. At he least got twice. it. He did get it, and then now it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was like the, the theme Tom. song from a sitcom. <laughs> 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 Time's up. No. It's because you don't have anything in it because you're so skinny. Right. <laughs> so we're too cold. Mm. But yes, we're at Cassandra Cass's house still. Oh, yeah. Yay. So do you have any good comedy stories? Any, like, of your favorite moments doing comedy? Oh, uh, nope. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was about uh, to kick you out. I was going to be like, okay, massage is over. Right, so, good, yeah, like, the other day, I mean, this is, like, personal accomplishment. Um, it was fucking pretty cool. It was I did my hometown. It's Fremont, Ohio. It's not that big, but it's, you know, it's between Sandusky, which is where Cedar Point is, and Toledo. And for the New Year's, like, I was able to do the comedy portion to put it together, have my boy uh, Travis Kyle come in from out of town. That was pretty cool. So I'm in charge of that. But funny fucking stories was uh, I went to Toronto. This was really recently. Ra uh, do you know Jason Roush? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was one of the first people on my podcast. Fucking good dude. You know? Very so good. great. If you didn't, like, I, I mean, he's a Canadian too, eh? Yeah. yeah. So if you didn't know him, you just knew him from the comedy, you'd be like, this guy's going to fucking, like, cut your kitten open and gut it. <laughs> and eat its intestines in front of you and then floss its teeth with the cat hair. I mean, mm -hmm. you'd be like, but in real life, you know, off the stage, he's, he's so Canadian. the nicest. Yeah. yeah. And, it's funny, he's like, you know, they'll, they'll love you up here because, you know, you're practically, like, not a Canadian, but you're a Canadian because that's, I don't know, they're all like you, that's what he said. So he's doing Toronto, and he's like, hey, man, come up, and I'm a big hockey fan, so I was like, fuck yeah. So I went up to Toronto, and doing yuck yucks, fucking go over, go over there, and he's halfway through his set, and there's a drunk guy yelling at him about him not being funny, and he's like, whoa. So, you know, he's going back and forth with them, and then half the crowd um, turns on the heckler. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So uh -huh. Rouse just looks at him like, don't worry about it, guys. I got this. And he just lights this dude up. The next thing you know, this guy goes, you know, charging towards the stage. And as he's going towards the stage, like, um, I'm looking at the security. They ain't doing shit, you know? And I mean, like... Because I don't think they realize, I don't know what's going on, you know. And I'm not trying to diss Yuck Yucks because I love that place. It's really cool to me. And I felt bad for the one security dude. So I walked over there because in the old days, like when I, my old days, like when I started hanging at the store, there really wasn't any security, you know, like there is now. <laughs> uh -huh. They'll fuck somebody up, dude. You know, the security guards now, back then it was like, please show them. So anyways, I'm talking to this one guy and I'm fucking putting him in a headlock. Kind of walk him out. And this is, the, and the Yuck Yucks guys are like, after the whole fact, they were pretty stoked about, you know, like, oh, thanks, man, you're, you're hired anytime you want to come up, you know. Nice. So that was, that was pretty cool. I got a free hoodie out of the deal, so, you know. Another time, we're doing uh, another weird brawl. It's like, we're doing Tap House in Virginia Beach. It's like a fucking, just a bar show. Uh-huh.